Good morning, friends. Happy Easter season still, the great 50 days of Easter. Love this season for uh, the new life. I don't know about you guys, my front garden where I've planted all kinds of things that I've forgotten that I planted is just full of life right now. I have a, a Solomon seal plant that I forgot that I put in and it is just coming right up. I am delighted. Uh, I hope that you are seeing that in your own gardens and in other gardens around that there is such new life after a cold, dark winter. That is true for our souls as well. One of the things that we are doing in this Easter season is taking up a collection for Lydia's house, who uh, we have had a relationship with for quite some time. They do such amazing work with women and their families who are formerly homeless. Um, you can see behind me right over here some diapers and some other stuff. We have a list, I believe, on the website uh, and also in the printed announcements on Sunday of things that we are taking those collections for in kind during the Easter season. Um, so let's really help those women experience that, that feeling of new life in maybe a prosaic way. It's not as nice as uh, beautiful flowers coming up out of the ground, uh, not as nice in terms of like beauty. But that kind of stuff is so important, so necessary, and, uh, and really increases quality of life. This is a big part of what we do. <laughs> uh, so happy Easter to you, and uh, a reminder to help make this Easter happy for others. Let's begin our time together with our prayer for the week. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, Open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Every time I feel this way, this old familiar sinking, I will troubles down by the water where the river will never run dry. Hallelujah.
A reading from the book of Acts. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety we had made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him the perfect, this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that I, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what He had foretold throughout the, all the prophets that His Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. A reading of Psalm 4, verses 1 through 8. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I'm hard-pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that God does wonders for the faithful. When I call, God will hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Most High. Many are saying, Oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O God. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. For only you, God, make me dwell in safety. The Gospel appointed for today is from the 24th chapter of Luke. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts? Arise in your hearts. Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. 
Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Today we have a story from the Acts of the Apostles. But, you know, the Acts of the Apostles readings are just sort of pulled out of the middle of longer narratives. And what is important to know about the reading we have today is the summary we're given at the beginning of the reading when it says, when Peter saw the wonder and amazement caused by his healing of the lame man. You may remember that Peter and John come into the temple. There's someone begging. And they say, silver and gold have we none, but what we give you is Jesus. We have a power that can liberate you, raise you up. And that's exactly what happens. This man gets up and begins leaping and dancing and praising God. And what is absolutely remarkable about this story is how much fuss it caused. Why all the fuss? It was not unusual for someone at the time to heal somebody. There were other healers going around. In fact, the authorities might have been pleased that someone was healed, someone that was begging every day. The religious authorities may have thought, oh gosh, good, we got that guy off of our front porch. That's not what is troubling. What is troubling? And the reason that the author of Acts is telling this story is that Peter and John have this power, namely the good news of Jesus, that can liberate people from the fear that disables them to live fully and abundantly. That is what is scaring the you-know-what out of the authorities. The authorities don't want that. You know, authorities control people with fear and suddenly you've got these two itinerant preachers bringing people back to life. What do the authorities do? They, in chapter four, arrest Peter and John. After they let them out, they tell them to stop doing this. Don't go around doing the kind of stuff you were doing. And they, they say, sorry, we need to keep doing this. You know, the Easter journey is a journey from fear to being liberated from fear and being free to do exactly what Peter and John are doing, living boldly. At the end of the Acts of the Apostles, we find out that Paul is arrested, you know, he's under house arrest in Rome. And the end of the Acts of the Apostles says that he is preaching about the kingdom boldly and without hindrance. You know, the Acts of the Apostles is not so much a church history as people think, although it does recount different chapters in the life of the church that are grounded in history. But most scholars think that it was written at a time when the church the early Christian church had run out of juice, run out of mojo. Easy to run out of mojo if you're being arrested and killed and threatened and, you know, after 40, 50 years of being on this mission, however long it was, the time this was written, you know, a second generation of Christians might be saying, gosh, you know, why, why did I get involved in this in the first place? I don't want to be thrown to the lions. And so what the author of Acts does is tell the story of the early church in such a way to inspire a community that is living in fear to keep at it. That to be a disciple is to be someone who lives without fear, lives boldly and without hindrance. Wow.
any church, any Christian, any priest is aware of the disabling power of fear. Just think how often in church life we are afraid to do something, afraid to fail, afraid it's not going to work out. And of course, in the case of, as was the case with Peter and John, the the fear of rejection, the fear of arrest, the fear of being put away. We don't like resistance, do we? We don't like people getting upset with us. So we know what it's like to hold back and to not live as freely as we want to live. You know, we're entering, as you well know, an election season. And I bet if you're like me, you're already aware of the disabling fear that comes with another election season. Can can my body take this? (laughs) Can my relationships take this? But I think what we've learned from Easter Day until now is that fear can be overcome. Remember on Easter Sunday, the women came to the tomb, the stone was rolled away, the voice from the tomb said, he is not here, he is risen. Go tell Peter and the disciples to go to Galilee, there you will see him. And what totally amazed us was that the women ran away and said nothing to anyone. Why? Because they were afraid. And that's where the Gospel of Mark ends. What I invited you to consider on Easter Sunday was that the reason Mark ends it that way is he's inviting us to finish the story. Will you and I be the ones to go back to Galilee? Will we resist the fear The invitation today is to resist the fear, to finish the story, to be a community of people who will go out into this world, election season or non-election season, and live boldly and without hindrance. You know, my job, I've told you this before, And please tell me if I ever violate this. My job is not to tell you how to vote. I have a voting record of which I am not proud. My job as a preacher in any election season or any time is to simply say, listen, what you and I both know is that this is our calling. Our calling is to follow Jesus in any time or any place. And the gift we will bring the broader community, the gift we will bring the country, is if we are following that way and advocating for the kind of things that Jesus wants us to advocate for. And to do it boldly and without hindrance. To not be afraid. To be like Peter and John and get up in front of the authority and say, you know, I gotta gotta say what God wants me. I gotta do what God wants me to do. Arrest me reject me, cast me out, whatever. This is what we have to do. And what we know is that we're going into a time where to be that bold may bring rejection. But what we know is that Jesus wants us to love our neighbor no matter what. What we know is that Jesus wants us to advocate for policies that include absolutely everybody. Policies that welcome the stranger. Again, I'm not suggesting any particular ones, but as you measure whatever it is you're gonna be voting for on issues or on candidates, do they fit this bill? Jesus wants us to be people who love our enemies. People want, Jesus wants us to be people who forgive others. 
Jesus wants us to be people who believe that it says, as it says in the beginning of the book of Genesis, that everyone is created in God's image. What you and I need to be in this time or any time are people who are laser focused on following Jesus. Jim Wallace, a very consequential figure in the history of the church in this country for the last 50 years, an evangelical for social justice and all the rest of it. He's very fond of saying the issue for the church at any point in time, especially during an election season, is not to go left, not to go right, but to go deeper. We need to go deeper. We need to be faithful to what we're called to do. And whatever votes we cast, to be saying, is, is this what Jesus would want us to do? You see, unfortunately, in the history of the church, not just in this country, but in many countries, our religion became very compartmentalized. We sort of had our religion over here, where it was all about getting saved one day and going to heaven. And then we had the rest of our life over here, politics over here. Jesus would say no. Jesus said, listen, Following me is about helping God make a body politic that is consistent with what God wants. It's very political in that sense. It's not Republican political, Democrat political, conservative, liberal political. It's the politics of Jesus. It's the politics of God. Can we be community that will live bold and unhindered. You probably remember Alex Martin, who could forget Alex Martin, an assistant on our staff for a number of years. I, I think I've got this story right, but after the 2016 election when um, Trump defeated uh, Clinton, Alex, who was a, a Democrat and um, uh, voted for Clinton, um, I think it was the day after the election. He made a sign that read something like, I'm a Democrat, but I love Republicans. And he went up to Eastgate Mall, up to Eastgate Mall, and he held this sign up. Now you would think that's pretty innocuous, right? Wrong. He said that eventually someone came out of the store where he was standing and said, you can't do that, you can't do that. They did to him what the authorities were doing to Peter and John, just shut up, stay in your lane, live in fear. Okay, so Alex wasn't doing something that was gonna get him arrested or thrown in jail or martyred, right? But how can we live freely and abundantly? How can we be like this lame man who was raised up, leaping, dancing, praising God? How can we find the energy by the grace of God to not be disabled by fear, but to be free and faithful and helping God make this world what God wants it to be. See you on the next step of the journey.
dear God. We rejoice in the promise of new life you offer us during this Easter season. However, we sometimes want the kind of reassurance that brought courage and joy to Jesus' followers so long ago. Remind us that Jesus longs to connect with us in our everyday lives too, a connection that will transform our ability to understand what it means to live as your people. As today's psalmist says, lift up the light of your countenance upon us all, dear God. Put gladness in our hearts. Reassure us that we can live in safety because of your presence and rest in your peace. Help us to embrace Jesus' resurrection as the truest thing there is proof of your eternal love for us all. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For all suffering from the effects of natural disasters and violence, for those suffering from physical or emotional illness, addictions, and loss of hope because of how hard life can be in this troubled world, for all those assisting others to weather crises with hope and dignity. Let us do what we can to assist your saints in action. Send your healing spirit to those on our prayer list, especially Charlene Bebout, Kelsey Lehman, Judy Yeager, Grayson Long, Tom Habig, Pat Noland, Louise Lowry, Evelyn and Olivia Nemesek, Rod Davidson, Salem Maisie Hart, Wendy Jones, those grieving the loss of loved ones and for your own concerns. We pray for the dearly departed, especially those we now name before you. Dave Pavlik, Heavenly Mother and Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, will you join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive a blessing. This blessing uh, has three parts, and your response to each part is Amen, Alleluia. The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be on you. Amen. Alleluia. The blessing of God, Mother, Lover, and Friend be in you. Amen. Alleluia. And the blessing of God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier be from you. Amen. Alleluia. Let us go forth, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. <laughs>